Welcome everyone, I'm Stefano Marzani, Principal Specialist Solutions Architect, Autonomous Vehicles at AWS. And I'm Dean Phillips, Worldwide Tech Lead for Automotive at AWS. So Dean, one of the most important aspects driving innovation in connected mobility and autonomous development is edge computing. It allows customers to process huge amounts of data in the vehicle and apply machine learning without incurring the costs of transmitting anything to the cloud, right? When you think about the petabytes of data coming from the vehicle and the cost of sending it to the cloud, it's a game changer to be able to process and run this data at the edge and send only what you need to the cloud. Yes, and think about a situation where you're recording videos from the car and now have the possibility to send only the video you really need to the cloud for processing, removing non-critical and privacy-sensitive information like license plates and faces. There are also many other use cases like identifying when passengers or pets are in a vehicle, or even usage-based insurance use cases that combine video and vehicle data. Yeah, these are really super relevant use cases. When you know applying machine learning inside the vehicle brings uh, enormous value and eventually savings instead of processing data in the cloud. Let me introduce you to Srikanth Kodali, Senior IoT Architect from AWS Professional Services, who has been working hard on this problem for our customers and specifically with AWS Greengrass and ML Inference at the Edge for autonomous vehicle product development. Srikant, why don't you show us your demo on lane detection? Hey, Dean and Stefano, thank you for having me. I'm super excited to be part of this dialogue and thanks for providing great details about connected mobility and autonomous development at the Edge itself. Imagine a situation wherein for an autonomous driving, we want to understand the lanes on a freeway and correct the driving behavior if the driver crosses the mark lanes without any indication. So onboard cameras can capture the video and we can apply a computer vision model on the video frames and can guide the driver if they are crossing the lane lines. Before going into the architecture details and demo, I just wanted to talk a couple of points about our AWS IoT Greengrass service. As you know, AWS IoT Greengrass is really two things. One is a set of software that runs on the device and the software manages the device's relationship to the cloud. And it's a collection of components or applications that do things like streaming the data out to the cloud, passing messages between different components, etc. The other side of that is the cloud, which has data plane where you send all the data from devices and it also has the control plane where we can do management tasks like upgrading the software or changing some parameters like that. And Greengrass version 2 is really a, a complete top to bottom rethink of how the structure works and it's deeply all about modularity. So let's bring up a raw video file that we are using for the demo purpose here. And we will see the steps that are involved in processing the video at the edge using AWS IoT Greengrass service. We are using OpenCV libraries to identify the lane lines and creating the boundary boxes around these lanes. We have a raw video coming from the vehicle's camera. The first application is reading the video file and divides the video into chunks of frames. Once the video is divided into frames, we will apply the computer vision model on each frame. This model will take each frame and does bunch of processing steps and generates a new frame with bounding boxes around the lanes. Then we will pass these processed frames into another component or a second application. Think that the first program has a publisher and the second program as a subscriber and the publisher component is publishing the video frames to a topic in the IoT Greengrass message broker and the subscriber which is subscribed to this topic will read these video frames. Passing of frames between the applications is possible by the AWS IoT Greengrass message broker. We use the interprocess communication SDK that is available in AWS IoT core SDK to serialize these frames with some metadata like the frame number in the video, whether it is a last frame 
or first frame or any kind of metadata that is applicable to each frame and pass them to the second component. The second application or the component that is managed by the AWS IoT Green Grass service will deserialize these frames and will pass them to the stream manager. The functionality of the stream manager is to send the messages to AWS Cloud in an efficient and reliable manner. In this case, stream manager will pass the newly modified frames to an Amazon S3 bucket. Another program on the cloud side will rearrange the process frames with the bounding boxes into a video stream. Once all the frames are received in the S3 bucket, we trigger a Lambda function to find out all the process frames belongs to the video and sorts them in the order and will create the final video and store it in an another S3 location. Now let's deploy this green grass managed components and run the video processing at the edge. Once you log into the AWS console, let's go to the IoT core service. On the left hand side, we will go to the green grass section. Here we can see core devices, components and the deployments options. Let's go to the core devices section here. And here my core device name uh, is ggv 2 ec 2 lanes demo thing. And let's go to the components. And here I have three components uh, in my account. And the two of them are deployed in my edge device. And one is the publisher component and other one is a subscriber component. And each component has its own version associated with. As I mentioned before, these components are nothing but the software pieces that will be running on the AWS IoT Greengrass code device. And each component will have two things. One is the SP file and the other one is the artifacts. Component recipe uh, is, is a file that defines a component's details and its dependencies and its artifacts and life cycles. And the life cycle specifies uh, the commands to run, to install, or run, or shut down the component. Think that this file as a metadata file about that particular component. Components can have any number of artifacts, and these components are actually binaries. Artifacts can include scripts, or compiled code, or static resources, or uh, any other files that a component consumes. Let's go to one of the components. For example, let's go to the publisher component as per our architecture. Okay. And the current version of version for this component is 1.0.75. Uh, let's create a new version. So imagine that you updated your code uh, for this component and then you want to deploy the newer version onto the device. Okay, so uh, assume that you already updated the uh, code and uh, let's update the version here, 1.0.76. And click on the create version button. And now uh, we are ready to deploy our components onto the Edge device. So let's click on the deploy button. And here, um, you know, you can select, uh, you know, this deployment to the existing deployment. So, or you can create a new deployment as well. In this case, I already have the existing deployment, so I'm going to select the existing deployment. Okay. And here, let's just click on the next button. And here, you can see uh, the components uh, which are, you know, which are ready to be uh, deployed onto our Edge device. And at the same time, you can also see the public component, uh, you know, which is our, uh, you know, it, green grass nucleus version which which also needs to be deployed onto the edge device okay so let's select these three components and then click on next button and if you see uh, here you know uh, our newer version is 1.0.76 so you can also select you know you can also select a version from here but you know it's already selected here and the nucleus version which we are going to deploy is 2.0.5 Okay, so let's click on next button and uh, just click on next year and it's just, you know, showcasing, you know, what, what components and what versions you are going to select onto your edge device. So just click on the deploy button now. Okay, 
now uh, it's getting you know these components are getting deployed onto our edge device so let's go to the you know terminal and see uh, you know uh, the log files and my uh, component just got deployed uh, if you see uh, you know it took uh, 14 seconds to process uh, you know this video frame which has 75 uh, frames in that video and then on the subscri on the subscriber log file you can see these files are get are copied to this you know this particular S3 location okay uh, now let's go to the AWS S3 console and here let me go to that uh, you know S3 location and if you see here the uh, prefix you know uh, is a for this run is you know it starts with eight and Q. So let me select this and then let me search for this. So here here is the folder that was created just now. And if you log, if you go into this, you will see all the files that are created uh, as part of this run. Okay. So let's select you know one of the files. Now let's download this file. And if you see here the image, you know you will see this you know bonding box is applied. Uh, neatly uh, and then you, you will also see the lanes uh, identified as part of this you know uh, uh, computer vision model okay and once all the images are processed and copied to s3 bucket as i mentioned before a lambda function will get triggered and then it will create the final video with this you know processed images right so let's let me go to that location and, then, and here is the oops final file that was just created and here is the final video output generated by the computer vision model which is managed by the AWS IoT Greengrass service at the edge. So you can plug in any of the ML or CV model uh, and use the inter-process communication and stream manager functionalities to efficiently process the video data at the edge and send it to the AWS cloud. Instead of applying the CV model and sending the modified frames to cloud using a single piece of code or a program we can divide this into different components. Okay, uh, as I mentioned before, Greengrass version two is deeply all about modularity. So we can divide this large program into multiple components and can have multiple subscriber components and can apply different ML inference models in the pa in parallel on the same set of frames. I hope you like this demo and thank you, Dean and Stefano, once again for giving me this opportunity.